Our meeting is now open for sharing testimonies of healing through Christian science. Janet. Janet from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. About nine years ago, my husband and I decided it was time to move from our home of 28 years. This was during the downturn of the economy. We found a house that had everything we wanted. It seemed to be the right house for us. This house was in bankruptcy, which meant that we would have to place a bid on it, which we did. And two weeks later, we were informed there was a higher bid and that ours was rejected. I was surprised at the rejection of this bid because I felt strongly that this was the right house for us. I became a little depressed about it, and it wasn't long after that that it became clear to me that I was being self-willed. I needed to see God's will had to be done, and I had to humbly let go of my will, which I must confess was not very easy. I prayed with the article on place attributed to Mrs. Eddy, which can be found on Plainfield's website. It took me a few days of consecrated prayer and talking humbly with God. I prayed that I did not want one thing unless it was from him. And if we were to stay put or move on, I would be completely satisfied. I also prayed that I knew his will would be a blessing to my husband, myself, and to all. I left this with God and didn't give it another thought. I was completely at peace and joyful. Two weeks later, received a call from our agent asking if we were still interested in the house. She said the people who initially won the bid backed out of it. And if we still wanted it, the house was ours. I knew this was God's doing, and I humbly thanked him for his loving kindness. On page 167 in Science and Health, Mrs. Eddy states, Only through radical reliance on truth can scientific healing be realized. We secured the house and put our own our home on the market, and even though we were in a recession, Our home sold in one week at the amazement of friends and neighbors. One major blessing that occurred in purchasing this house was that I was able to have my own office area. My husband bought me my own computer, and through searching one day on my computer nine years ago, I found Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. Because of God leading me here, I have received many blessings, and I look forward to many more. I'm very grateful to my father, mother, God, Mary Baker Eddy, and this dear, sweet, beautiful Plainfield Christian Science Church, Independent. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Jim from Arizona. Sherry from California, go ahead. Thank you. Over this past weekend, I began to experience an extreme tightness and pain in my neck and upper back and shoulders. With it came another aggressive suggestion of what brought this on. I was able to shut that suggestion down quickly, but could not silence the suggestion of discomfort. What came to me to pray with was the scientific statement of being, which was read tonight, and the question, what is man, part of which was read tonight, both from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. Early Monday morning, I awakened to hear myself saying, I am not matter. I am not made up a brain, blood, bones, or any other material element. The scriptures inform me that I am made in the image and likeness of God as stated in the first chapter of Genesis. Matter is not that likeness. The likeness of spirit cannot be so unlike spirit. These were paraphrases of some of the sentences from What is Man? from Science and Health. At that moment... The tightness, tension, etc., began to release in degrees, small at first, then in a wonderful feeling of surrender. 
effortless. I was so grateful for the proof of the power of this truth in Christian science, and I thanked God. Later that day, I began finishing up an activity that I had started over the weekend, and I began to experience the same symptoms I had earlier. This time, the suggestion said, this is what brought the discomfort on the first time, and it is back. To that, I said, no way. There is no reversal of this healing, and also whatever is my duty to do, I can do without harm to myself, which is stated in our textbook under the marginal heading of honest toil has no penalty. This activity was honest toil, directed by God, and was going to be completed without discomfort, and it was. I was again so grateful to feel the power of this truth, and again, I thanked God. And now, I get to do it again tonight. Thank God again for seeing and feeling his power, and his love in my experience. Thank you. Thank you. Joanne. Joanne from Florida. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm very grateful for our healing services. Last week before the Wednesday testimony meeting, I had quite a painful backache and couldn't really get comfortable even sitting here at home in a cushy living room chair. We've been taught here, though, to leave all personal cares and problems outside the door when you come to church and to work for the service, to know that it's the healing activity of God and that everyone attending, whether in person or online, will be blessed and healed by it. When you do this, you find that when you leave church, the problem is gone. Well, that's exactly what happened. Sometime after the service, I realized that my backache was completely healed. I am so grateful for these church services and to be able to attend them from a distance. I am grateful for all the healing they bring to all who attend or who listen to them online later. And I'm very grateful for all the practitioners' help that I'm receiving. I'm just so glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Dede. Dede from Georgia. Go ahead. Thank you. Through my study of Christian science in this church, I'm growing constantly while learning lessons that are changing my life completely for the better. I find that in my daily work, I'm being led to help people by offering them support in the various aspects of their individual experiences. As I reflect more and more, I'm overwhelmed with gratitude for the fact that I'm no longer able to deny God in my life out of fear of being embarrassed or offending anyone. Whenever I'm asked about what has helped me or is helping me, I'm compelled to talk about God. Whenever I'm asked to help another, I'm equally motivated to talk about God, sharing much of what I've learned through my own experience and explaining that I cannot give honest credit to anything else for the continued blessings in my life. Very recently, I've seen an increase in positive results shared by different people I'm working with personally and professionally who are now also compelled to give glory to God for all of the good happening in their lives as they progress significantly. I know that the only way I'm able to be of any support is by letting God lead me all the way every day. And I'm so grateful to be seeing the wonderful resulting proof of God's care for me and for all. Thank you, Florence, for tonight's readings. I'm very grateful for all the testimonies given so far, and I'm grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Pilar. Pilar from New York. Go ahead. 
Hi, good evening. Um, I want to express gratitude for all the wonderful things that God has done uh, these past couple of weeks uh, for me. I had to go to Florida, travel to Florida with my two grandkids that are small. They're four and six. And even though I was traveling with my daughter, um, it can get pretty hectic. I have to say that um, with the uh, practitioner's uh, support, the checking in and the going through the security, which can be pretty um, pretty uh, uh, scary uh, with the two kids, uh, went very smoothly. And then my daughter, because of the anxiety, started having some some kind of chest pain. I called the practitioner, and that was resolved also very quickly. Um, the whole trip was very harmonious. Um, on the way back, it also the same thing happened. The kids were tired and cranky, and we had really uh, waited <clears throat> more than we should have to go to the airport, and the lines to the uh, go through security were pretty long. Um, this uh, security guard approached us and started talking to the kids and gave them some stickers. And then all of a sudden, he turned around and said to the guy that was um, close, who had the priority line, said, please let them go through. So we went through there, and we avoided having to deal with two screaming kids and the long line. It was very, very harmonious. Um I'm also very much, re, uh, I'm also in the process of moving, and I have to say that, again, with the support of the practitioner, I um, the first apartment I went to see was the apartment that I'm going to get. It was so just perfect, and um, I'm so much reminded of um, him 153 that says, In thee, my God and Savior, forevermore the same, my spirit has rejoicing for holy is thy name. And then it continues with praise him who lives the lowly for faithful is his word. I magnify and bless thee for faithful is thy word. And I believe that, yes, he has been very faithful in all his promises. Thank you very much, Florence, for all those beautiful readings. And thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy. I am so grateful to be a member of this church and for all I am learning here. I first came here in June of 2013, and those first few months I spent learning the absolute basics of Christian science. One of those basics that my practitioner taught me was the need to give testimonies. So when I came to the church one Wednesday in October of 2013 without a testimony to give, I left that night feeling awful. I continued to feel awful that next day and all the way until the next Wednesday. I was just really warm. and <laughs> So um, I made sure that next Wednesday night to have a testimony, and once I gave it, that awful feeling was replaced with such a good feeling, like I had done my duty. All these years later, I've never forgotten that, and I've shown up each week ready to give my testimony. Giving testimonies has, given me, has, has me constantly looking for the ways that God is enriching my daily life. I'm so grateful for this, because each week helps me make sure I am getting the most of everything this science offers. These testimonies have forced me to really demand the blessing at every step, and I'm very grateful for that. And there have been so many blessings. There's no part of my life that this science is not completely overhauled. Mary Baker Eddy says on page 206 of Science and Health, quote, whatever blesses one blesses all, unquote. I can see now that sharing what has blessed me and healed me has shown other people what Christian science can do just as hearing the testimonies of other members inspires and comforts me. It amazes me all the time what we get from Christian science 
can continue to bless with no loss of effectiveness over time. I'm so grateful for this church and for practitioner support and for these meetings that Mrs. Eddie made such an important part of our church life. Thank you. And now I have a testimony from Diana. Hello, this is Diana from Berlin and Vienna. I'm in Berlin now, and I would like to express my gratitude for everything that all of you do day after day, week after week, and month after month. But today I would like to express my gratitude for the round table on February 16th. The discussion about always seeing and knowing that the world is God's world is helping me stay connected to the right channel, so to speak. Knowing that the world is God's world, so that any problem that seems insurmountable, especially a problem that seems so big that it seems that one person can do nothing to alleviate it, can actually be alleviated by seeing and knowing that it is God's world, and therefore there is no world problem. In the discussion, Mary quoted, The fear of a man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe, meaning that the fear of any person or world events is a trap giving power to something other than God. Hearing and remembering both of these ideas is helping me to stay aligned with the first commandment. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Linda. Thank you very much for the readings tonight and the beautiful music at the beginning. Tonight I want to express my gratitude for the prayers of my Plainfield practitioner, her instructions, and the practical lessons I am learning. The other day while she was working with me, I was experiencing a sharp pain in my side. It, was, it happened a little later after I had hung up, and I was working with an article she had given to me called What Our Leader Says by Mary Baker Eddy, and in it what stuck in my thought was good thoughts or impervious armor. She did not know of the particular situation I was in, but I could feel her prayers wash over me, and I felt peace, and the pain vanished. And it was quite a sharp pain, and I felt very weak, but it just vanished, and I felt invigorated and in such a deep sense of love, God's love, wash over, and the pain ne never returned. That was it. And I'm so very grateful for uh, the seeing these results of prayers that come from the correct understanding of Christian science a love for Mrs. Eddie and God and faithful to being to Jesus's teachings and that this is something we can all work toward and uh, bring out in our own lives and it's very inspiring to me to see how Christian science truly heals. I'm very grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Chardell. Oh, good evening, everyone, and thank you. Our spiritual progress can come sometimes quickly and sometimes slowly. I am grateful for my practitioner's prayers and encouragement for a long time concerning fears that I had been accepting in my thinking, and to quote a friend, and to get rid of those old beliefs. Unquote. As I have testified before, visits to the dentist were unsettling and often distressing. That has been changing, and I experienced a healing of gum issue last year because of practitioner health. Now I am so happy to share my latest visit to a dentist where practitioner prayer sustained me and something wonderful happened while I was in the examination chair. A feeling of peace came over me, and I realized that God was in total control of the event, and all the details of the visit were harmonious, kind, and calm. Everything was perfect, 
and the dentist and hygienist kept using that word several times. They seemed surprised that everything was in perfect order. I am so very grateful for everything I am learning here, surrounded by truth and love, and that is being shared individually and with the whole wide world. Thank you. Also, thank you for the wonderful readings on Behold the Perfect Man and the music. Thank you. Shahidat from Maryland. Go ahead. Thank you. I'd like to express my gratitude tonight for the weekly lessons that are published, developed and published by this church. I'm thankful for the opportunity to, to listen along with the lesson every morning. I always find a nugget of truth to work with that blesses my day. And the fact that I can download the full text onto my phone and read it at any time is a wonderful tool, and I greatly appreciate it. I know a lot of work and prayer goes into developing these lessons, and I just want to express my gratitude for them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, this is Bruce. Um, something that was in our lesson from last week reminded me of an experience that I had a number of years ago. And the passage from the lesson was from Proverbs, and it says, Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. You know, um, this kind of goes with the uh, readings that were given tonight. Thank you, Florence, where you read from Science and Health a passage that we read very frequently, Jesus beheld the perfect man. And later on it says that the correct view healed. I remember some years ago, I was working in an office and I was kind of observing what was going on. And it looked to me like some of the guys would say something to the boss because they felt like that's what the boss wanted to hear. It would make them look good in the, the boss's eyes. And I'm thinking, well, I don't know how honest and forthright that is. But in our church, we had classes and frequently we discussed this statement from Science and Health that Jesus beheld the perfect man. Well, the time came when I had to tell my boss something, and it looked like it may not be what he wanted to hear. So I just sat there and thought for a minute, the perfect man, well, I'm that perfect man. My boss is also that perfect man. I'm, I can't be led to want to say anything other than honest and forthright. My boss cannot be led to hear anything other than what's honest and forthright. So this is the perfect man talking to the perfect man. With that in mind, I went into his office and said what I needed to say about something with one of the clients there. And he sat and listened and took it. And as a result, we were able to uh, resolve some problems with that client. And I'm so thankful for Christian science. And... Thank you for the passage that we had in last week's lesson that says every man's judgment comes from the Lord and not from the ruler's favor, whatever that may be. So, very thankful for Christian science in this church here in Plainfield. <clears throat> Gary. I'd like to uh, put in a plug for tithing tonight. Uh, Jeremy talked about the benefits of expressing gratitude to God for all that he does for us. And one of the ways of expressing that gratitude is to tithe. Um, as many of you know, tithing is giving 10% of your income to God, to the church, to practitioner, to God's representative. And I know for a lot of people, that can seem like a lot of money. It can seem like a, uh, a real, a, almost a loss. Well, when my wife and I moved to Plainfield many, many years ago, we, we felt the need to tithe because we were so grateful for what this church was doing for us. 
And we benefited from this church. We benefited from the gratitude we expressed. We benefited from the tithing. Uh, and it was very clear that by putting God first, paying God first, he took care of us. Well, after several years, I started my own business. And one year, we didn't have any income. And uh, I had a really important decision to make and a tough one to make. Would I continue to tithe? And how much would I tithe? And so, because, you know, 10% of zero isn't very much. <laughs> but my wife and I decided to continue tithing the same amount that we had been tithing when we did have income. We had some savings that got us through. But it was a real leap of faith to continue to tithe the same amount without having any income and not knowing when we would have income again. Well, it was about a year, but after that, our income came back and the business flourished and we've never looked back. Um, and I am so grateful for that experience because it helped me get rid of a lot of the fear of not having enough. It taught me that when we, that, that there's a principle, when we give the good that God gives us, when we share that in the right way and express our gratitude to God for the good that he gives us, he keeps giving us even more. If we selfishly try to hold it to ourselves, well, the, the well dries up. <laughs> the fountain stops giving. This is such a, a wonderful, important lesson that I am so grateful to be learning in this church. That putting God, it's a covenant throughout the entire Bible. Putting God first, he takes care of us. I'm so grateful to be learning this, so grateful to be here tonight, and thank you for the readings tonight. Thank you. Luba, Luba from Ohio, go ahead. I'm so grateful for these testimony meetings and everything else available at this church. It is so true about the importance of testimonies. Just listening to them gives me inspiration and understanding. My practitioner is such an enormous part of my growing closer to my understanding of the truth and using the principles of Christian science in my daily life. I am so grateful for this. Thank you so much for tonight's reading, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Lil. Those wonderful readings tonight and the beautiful music. The last couple of days I had a real wonderful experience of God's ever-present care. I was in the supermarket a couple days ago and I was looking at some items on the top pile, which is pretty high up, but I just kept looking and looking and suddenly I heard a voice from down the aisle from a man I don't know and he says, can I help you? Can I get something for you? And I just, I was just awestricken, and I, I just smiled and said, thank you, no, very much, I'm okay. And it, it just, I've never had that happen before. Today, the same thing happened. I was in an aisle looking at an item on the top, just looking at it. And the fellow that yelled out was at the end of the aisle, not that close. And he says, do you need some help? Can I get something for you? And I said, no, thank you very much, I'm okay. And I just, it just struck my heart that you know, God is always there and he's always caring for us and extending love. And um, 
I just couldn't stop thanking him for that. And uh, I just wanted to express my gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Florence from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for all the testimonies so far. I'm very grateful. It's really encouraging to hear them. I am so grateful to Christ Jesus' example in the Bible and how it shows us to what extent he preserved that Christ consciousness. Mrs. Eddy tells us 425 Science and Health that consciousness constructs a better body when faith in matter has been conquered. It's so clear to what extent Christ Jesus kept pure this Christ consciousness, undisturbed, uninfluenced by anything, all the turmoil around him and everything, he kept it. Therefore, he went everywhere. It's so humbling to, to read about all the different healings that he did. Every form of sickness he healed because he had that perfection of consciousness. Mrs. Eddy herself tells us so many times in Science and Health that we also must cling to that truth about the science of being, that perfect spiritual selfhood, and give up identifying with the old man the lie that we are imperfect mortal personalities. All the negatives that come, Bicknell Young writes about it in his, the book that we sell here, collected his collected writings on the chapter called Aggressive Mental Suggestion and Malpractice. In summary, he's saying that we have to see that these negative suggestions that come, first, we have to see that they are false, completely false. Second, we must know and recognize that they are powerless to mesmerize our Christ consciousness. And third, we have to know the truth, the truthful facts, the spiritual truths that we are learning that the suggestion is lying about. He's saying this way we hold to our spiritual perfection, our sonship, and in so doing, we watch the lies disappear, as some of the testimonies say. I am so grateful for what the Bible has taught me for what Mrs. Eddy's practical application of the truth does and how the faithful living of this science by so many does help us all to press on. So grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Mary. This is from our uh, church website bulletin board, first two from Florida. Thank you for the beautiful singing of this morning's solo. How beautiful are thy dwellings. We have heard it many times before and loved it, but never heard it sung with such love and purity of soul as it was sung today. I had to wipe away tears at the end. <clears throat> Thank you, Faith, Jared, Craig, and Bruce. And then also Florida, I want to say thank you to Carol and Sharon especially, <clears throat> excuse me, whose quiet and prayerful work have made the church calendar possible all these years. Often we don't always express gratitude for the things that this church offers. The calendar is such a simple yet powerful reminder of God's presence to keep on our desk or our kitchen counter or even to give to another. In Illinois, my practitioner sent me an audio file of the article, Wonderful Things Are Happening by Dorothy Rickey. This morning I listened to more of the article and was blessed with this angel message. No one deserves to live without God's perfection. In fact, no one can live without reflecting God's perfection. I've been knowing this truth about a friend who seemingly is dealing with financial troubles. Through God's supply, I've been able to help. I know and realize that it is only through the glory and blessing of God that supply is available. This morning I realized this truth also applies to struggles with health, issues, health issues, and feelings of unhappiness. 
None of God's children deserve to struggle with disease, pain, or lack in any physical form. None of God's children deserve to feel disappointed, unfulfilled, or unhappy. There is only one truth that heals all. God's allness is the only power, and His principle puts His infinite resources into action in each one of our lives. No matter what the outward appearance, remember, wonderful things are happening. Don't be impressed with the lies of mortal mind. Be grateful, joyous, and yes, supremely happy. And then these are a few comments on YouTube after one of the roundtables. Um, thank you for the timely guidance, grateful indeed. Uh, this is absolutely the best roundtable I have ever heard. It is truly, it truly has the answers to so many things, even to bring me back into the practice. I am deeply grateful. It brings me even closer to looking into humbly joining this work. Thank you all, Plainfield Church. And what a wonderful testimony of the truth. I am grateful for the Plainfield Church Christian Science, Mary Baker Eddy, and Christ Jesus. I am learning so much. Today I finished the first chapter of Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, read my Bible, listened to the roundtable lesson twice, did my prayers, started a journal, and finished my night by listening to this testimony meeting. What a blessing. So we're grateful for those posts and any thumbs up you want to send our way. Um, and then this is an email from Florida um, concerning the Love is the Liberator, our, magaz our magazine. I subscribe to this publication and look forward to it and look forward to receiving each issue with bated breath. Love is the Liberator is wonderful and inspiring, and it keeps getting better with every issue. I am so very grateful that Plainfield has undertaken this amazing effort and know that it is truly blessing the world. Many thanks to all who contribute to the production and publication of it. Actually, many thanks to all of you and all of the great work that goes on at Plainfield with much love and appreciation. And then she also sent this local newspaper article in Florida. A Sarasota man is getting national attention for his particular set of skills. He's still driving at age 107. A video was posted featuring him on his birthday as he dr drives around with his 99 year old fiance in a red Mercedes convertible. <laughs> That's very sweet. Anyway, <laughs> he brought from his doctor for $4,000 at the age of 103. So anyway, it's just nice to know that people are up and kicking and not yeah. growing old. <laughs> so, okay, and then last is a testimony from Ohio. I would like to express my sincere gratitude for Plainfield Christian Science Church. I have been a member for about a year now, and I love exploring and learning from the resources available on the website. Although I was raised in Christian Science, I, like so many others, struggled with demonstration and fell away from Christian Science when my children were young. Now that they are grown, I have returned. My new understanding of God is thanks to the clear teachings at this church. This is my first, but certainly not my last, testimony. I recently asked a Plainfield practitioner for help with a long-standing case of eczema, which covered me from head to toe. She suggested I work with the article True Vision by John Morgan <clears throat> and also Age by Mary Baker Eddy. The following statement spoke strongly to me, quote, and don't look on life from any viewpoint with a protest. Cultivate a love for people exclusive of yourself, and let it be that divine love, that, di that divine love that sends out joy to everyone, and so happiness to self." End quote. I had been protesting and believing that some people within my circle were negative and unlikely ever to change. I justified, and it was just the way they were, placing myself above them in an ivory tower, that recognition was very humbling. 
A child I had taken care of for four years had always been a challenge. The older she got, the more difficult her behavior became. I subconsciously believed that she would never be able to change. Well, not surprisingly, those irritations were being manifested all over my body. I worked with a practitioner for a little over a week, at which time I felt I had made significant progress with, with this problem and continue to grow daily, pursuing the path of loving everyone and trying to see them as God created them, not through limited human sight and experience. The practitioner suggested that I read what Mrs. Eddy stresses in the article age, quote, you change the physical manifestations in proportion to your changed thoughts. And also from that article, I enjoyed the f strong direction of the following statement, quote, your faith and trust in the omnipotent power of truth are perfect and unclouded, and you know that God is your sufficiency. Never was one of God's children palsied or helpless, for all his works are good and eternal, end, end quote. The practitioner told me that as she worked for me, God would be perfecting all that concerned me, as is in the verse Psalm 138.8. During the previous six weeks, I had been experiencing a persistent cough and respiratory issues. Within a couple of days of working with a practitioner, all of those symptoms disappeared. But that was not all. Two months prior, our older dog had become lame and had been hobbling with great discomfort. My husband, who is not a Christian scientist, had taken her to the vet and was given countless pills, none of which improved her situation. We were told that it might not improve because of her age. Three days after working with a practitioner, the dog was walking with a perfect gait and has continued to romp with the younger dogs like she was a pup puppy. I am so grateful for these healings, and it is sure proof that the Lord is perfecting all that concerns me. Thank you for the readings tonight. Um, I loved what was read in Matthew about Jesus, that they brought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as, as were touched were made perfectly whole. You know, the, our singing group here sings that beautiful song, He Touched Me. And one of the verses is, Shackled by a heavy burden, Neath a load of guilt and shame, then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I am no longer the same. I know perhaps all of us have felt that shackled by heavy burdens and pain and troubles, and um, such a beautiful thought that when we come to that Christ and just touch him, just touch the hem of his garment, <clears throat> 